Today we celebrate the memorial of Our Lady of Mount Karma. To celebrate this feast meaningfully, we must identify the two most important elements of this celebration. This relationship between Our Lady and Mount Carmel. The mountain has always been a symbol of the presence of God. The holy mountain of God therefore requires us to be holy so that we can encounter God's holiness. The effectiveness, efficacy of prayer truly comes from someone who is holy. That is why when we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, how much more for Our Lady who intercedes for us, how much more when we make Mary our patron in prayer. Because Mary is holy. Mary is pure. Mary is full of the love for God. And that was why in the 12th century, there were a group of brothers, of men coming together. They were hermits. And they went to Mount Carmel. They erected an oratory in honor of St. Mary of Mount Carmel. Because they too want to follow the footsteps of Elijah to be a man of prayer. And from Mary, learning how to develop their contemplative life. It was in the 14th century then that when the Carmelite order began, they took over this feast and called it Our Lady of Mount Carmel as a celebration and the deepening of their desire to be modeled after Mary, a woman of contemplation, and most of all, to be near the mountain of God. My dear brothers and sisters, truly, if we want to grow in union with the Lord, if we want to experience God's presence in our life, if we want to seek direction from the Lord, where else can we go if not to Mary at Mount Carmel? Because this is where we find her as a model of contemplation in prayer. In the Bible, we hardly hear Mary speaking. She was always contemplating. When the angels spoke to the shepherd, and the shepherd came to announce to Mary what they heard, we are told that Mary pondered over all these things and kept them in her heart. When Simeon prophesied that her son would be a sign of contradiction to humanity, she too kept everything in her heart. And when she found the Lord lost in the temple and she couldn't understand what the Lord was saying, she too once again pondered everything that Jesus said to her, I must be in my father's house. Mary is not just a lady that teaches contemplation, but truly a lady who knows how to welcome the word of God in her life. There can be no true prayer. We must always remember this. No true prayer unless it is founded, nourished, nurtured, inspired and drawn from the word of God. That is why in the Eucharistic celebration, all the liturgical prayers are basically taken from scriptures. That is why you must learn from Mary how to cultivate a deep love for the word of God. Mary told the servants at Cana in Galilee, do whatever he tells you. Jesus honored her by saying, those 
who listen to the word of God. They are my mother and my brothers. So Mary is the one who teaches us really to value the word of God and to believe in the word of God. Mary was not just a contemplative. Mary was an activist. She was not just only praying, but her life is one of charity. She brings Jesus to everyone wherever she went. When she met Elizabeth, the baby in her womb leapt for joy. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mary carried Jesus not just in her womb, but in her entire being. She was truly the tabernacle of the new covenant. And we too are called to be that way. We are called to be a blessing to people. We are called to be a joy to people. If we are not a blessing and a joy to people, then we must really think for ourselves, why are we not that way? Why do we want to bring misery to people? Why do we want to hurt people? We should bring joy, like Mary. That's why wherever she went, she was either helping Elizabeth in her old age, always reaching out. A true devotee of our Blessed Mother must be that way. Are you a joy or a pain? If you are a pain, then let us turn to Mary. We need to bring Mary into our home, into our house, into our heart. And to bring Mary into our heart is precisely this feast of Our Lady of Carmel is celebrating because it's very much associated the scapula. The scapula, your shield. But you should not wear the scapula as if it is a superstitious kind of charm. Wearing it will not help you unless you wear with faith. To wear the scapula means to say, I want to imitate Mary in her life in a way of faith, in a contemplation, in obedience to the word of God, in a humility in service, and most of all, reaching out to others in charity. This is what we mean when we wear the scapula, so that Mary is close to our heart, and not just to wear it like a charm, as if it's guaranteed, without we having a deep interior union with Our Lady. So once again, we say, draw us after you, O Virgin Mary. We shall follow your footsteps and arrive at the mountain of God.